Welcome back to Homeless But Human. Back with you today is Blake, Shayla, and Sam as we record the second episode of this three-part series with Sam, our Homeless Outreach Director, about going deeper and calling friends higher in relationship. Truly this path of relationship, reconciliation, and how to really take the ministry on the streets to the next level. And this is the training which he provides for our missionaries about halfway through the year, right when they've gotten to know the homeless in a way that it's time to ask these questions of how can we truly love this person better? And in the first episode, he talked, the way to do that is to go deeper and higher and discern which one is necessary at which part. So what Sam talked about in that first episode, again, to recap, taking it deeper, vulnerability sparks vulnerability, breaking through the wall and sharing the more personal level of friendship with our homeless friends, whether that be you sharing or getting them to share more, looking deeper into their own stories of why they are the way they are and what has happened in their life. And then from that, this next step being calling higher, shifting from this inward focus to looking outward, not just what feels good, not just relooking at our past, but what is the good? What is God calling me to? And what is God calling my friend to, right? And giving of yourself, receiving the gift of other. And through this, you will hear more from his wisdom, from his experience with stories and all the good that he has to share. All right. And with that, let us begin. People of Christ in the city, people of every, everywhere around the world, this is David Christopher Pacheco. Hi, my name is Kimmy. My name is Arthur Ortiz. Been in Denver since 1973. Okay, so let's just talk in circles for a little bit. <laughs> just talk in circles. Yeah. Just shoot the breeze a little yeah. bit. Now they see beyond what I look like. They see what my actions are and say, hey, that is a good person. A lot of people say home is home is where the heart is, but my heart's in many places. It's just I don't know where home is. So we just went over desires versus pursuing the highest good. Sam, what wisdom do you have next in this distinction between deeper and calling higher? Yeah, one would be the acknowledgement of harm in our lives versus reconciliation. So acknowledgement of harm being a way to go deeper into my story Mm. and reconciliation being the higher call. Mm. One of the first steps for someone in therapy is looking deeply inward and acknowledging the harm that was done to them. And I think we could probably talk uh, with our friends on the street for years and years about acknowledging the different harms in their life and coming to terms with those and accepting those. That's that's kind of the genius of modern uh, psychology and counseling. Mm-hmm. And stuff. Yeah. And uh, how, how beautiful it is to offer that listening ear and that curiosity into somebody's life and opening the floor to them to share those things. And I think it's, it's telling that what do we often talk about with our deep, our, our best friends? It's often the deepest hurts in our life and our struggles that we have. Very real. It's the people that uh, we feel comfortable with going to with the things that are very tough. Yeah. So that's, that's a beautiful part of, um, of friendship. Now, after that's kind of been accomplished, the ultimate goal, though, especially for Catholic Christians, is to move towards reconciliation. It's not just to stay uh, in this place where I just acknowledge uh, my hurts and I accept them and I just kind of move on with my life. The ultimate vision is to reconcile with those who have harmed us, mm. uh, to forgive and maybe maybe that doesn't mean you know becoming friends with them. I, you know, yeah, it maybe it's not com- possible, right. right? With many of our homeless friends, we're like, yeah, we just need to forgive them. You actually can't go be in a, do not be in a relationship with them, right? But some people, some people can, and 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 reconciliation can make can take many different forms. But yeah. you know, the world will give us visions for you know broken relationships with stories of revenge or you know, good luck, good riddance. And, yeah. you know, and it's all kind of funny. You know, we see comedies that are kind of like this, but the the Christian vision is reconciliation with those ruptures in our life. And uh, 
you know, ultimately reconciliation with God, reconciliation with ourselves. Yeah. And so we tell the missionaries at the beginning of the year, you know, their identity is agents of reconciliation. So we're not, we're not therapists. We're not uh, counselors. First of all, I don't have the training for that. Yeah. And we, <laughs> we wouldn't know what to do there. Right. Right. But, but our job is not just to kind of like listen and help people just feel better. Yeah. It's uh, we, we are encouraging, a, we're a reconciling force as, uh, as, we think Christ demonstrated in the, in the world. He was a, re- a reconciling force between uh, people, but also people and God. Reconciliation gets thrown around a lot here. Sam, how would you distinguish the difference between forgiveness and reconciliation? Oh, man. Or just there's like, going to be a lot of uh, theologians uh, who would critique this. Well, or, you know. Give us our basic Christ in the city on the streets. Just like maybe just defined reconciliation. Cause yeah, we don't want to get our theologian friends ripping us yeah. apart. Or, no, let's do it. This is a podcast. <laughs> no. We're doing it. <laughs> well, I, th- I think for forgiveness is more for me. If I, if somebody has done something, a trespass against me, there's almost this bind that holds me captive where I, I'm, I'm kind of holding them chained to this, this um, transgression but I, I'm kind of a slave to it too. And so forgiveness is kind of this letting go and it's for me. Mm. I think reconciliation on the other hand is it, it, it's for me, but it's also for the other. It's this, um, it's not just something, it's not just a letting go that happens in me, but it's maybe active steps towards the other person to mend the relationship. Mm. Um, forgiveness doesn't, necessarily mean that I have to talk t- to this person again or that I have to grow to like them again or anything like that. But reconciliation might be this step towards healing. Yeah. True healing. I was thinking, cause I, I mean, I've, I've heard multiple times of people that like, Oh, I've forgiven them, but I've never actually been able to, you know, say that to them or like even have that forgiving conversation with another person, but for yourself to move on you, you have to forgive um, just because otherwise you might hold on to it. But reconciliation seems seems different in a sense where it's like that person also gets to sharing. Yeah. This is a sharing of two um, two stories that, that they need to to share in the healing together. I like I like it described but that what way. What a great distinction, Sam, of deeper versus higher. Right? Mm-hmm. That first one being more innate, more self focused, excellent True. start. And like you said, it's a path. You got to start there. You can't try to mend a relationship if you haven't forgiven them. You know, imagine mm-hmm. how brutal <laughs> conversations would be, Yep. you know, but to reconcile is to go higher. What a good distinction between the two of those. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, the next uh, set that we have here is between deeper and higher is self-expression versus conversion. So there, there's something so freeing and beautiful when we have the space to express who we are to others, expressing the true self, uh, even those quirky and interesting aspects that most of the time we hide from. Other yeah, we're people. afraid people won't like us, right? Right. It's important to share those. Right. Well, and we like we we know that when we see those quirky parts of people, we're like, oh, that's I really like that. That's that's yeah, kind of like the endearing. real you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Super endearing. Um. Yeah, one of my favorite parts of having friends on the street is like seeing uh, a friend in like little moments come out of their shell and just sort of be themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super, super enduring and where they don't feel like they have to wear a mask or be somebody else. So it's very affirming as well. They they, they feel comfortable enough they can be themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, freedom. So. It's freedom. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other hand, in today's secular culture, self-expression is elevated to the max right it is the top virtue mm. uh of today self-expression so be time, who you are yes yes you know and and like social media right so in today's culture there's no higher virtue than self-expression it seems like mm. now rather than kind of always looking at the self and revealing hmm. the self to the world and to the people around me i, I think the higher call seems to be something more like conversion of the self, not just self-expression. There's the person I am right now, but who is God calling me to become? Mm. 
St. Paul uh, to the Ephesians. It's one of my favorite scripture passages. He said that you are to rid yourselves of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. So this old self and new self. So with our friends, you know, we're always playing this balance between kind of accepting them where they are, you know, looking for ways for that genuine self-expression to come out while also inviting them to strive for more, Mm. to become the new man, to become that person that God made them to be. And which is what we literally define, con, you know, uh, conversion yeah. and, uh, and and holiness, right? It's becoming the person that God has made me to be. So there can be definitely a, a deeper aspect of friendship where we're uh, learning to express ourselves more genuinely, which is really great. It's, it's a good thing. But maybe the higher call would be conversion. Who, where, who do I ought to become? Yeah, and it's, I mean, you can think it's, the most ridiculous examples almost get to this almost it could fall very flat on its face, but like, yeah, if you had a friend on the streets who is partaking in something that is just bad for themselves, right? You want them to be free to share about it. You want them to be able to like be like honest with you. Yeah. Right. But we know some things we do aren't going to make us like the best versions of ourselves to, Mm -hmm. to use the, secular terms right like or the image of god so it's like we know we must call them higher you know it's like yeah they're doing this thing that is self-harm and i'm so glad they were honest about it and we accept them where they are Mm -hmm. we aren't trying to say you terrible person we're like no let's walk together with this but there's something greater out there Mm -hmm. you know and then on the other hand there are those things where it's like that's so fun you love that you know like can we go deeper like, are you even called to a higher level of enjoyment of that? Or, yeah, that that's a hard one to give an example of, but it's so real and really manifests itself in friendships. The, the missionaries um, do a great job of that, and they're often challenged to do that at the beginning of the year. But to not just, to not end there, but also to find ways to invite them to see themselves, um, not just like how I want to or how I feel, but who did God make me to be? And yeah. it's, it's a higher call. It's a harder call. And the missionaries have to get super creative with ways to do that. But uh, that, would be a, that would be an example of this. Yeah. And yeah, it comes from knowing the deeper person, mm-hmm. right? We don't tell them, hey, you should consider this after meeting them four times. No, it comes after knowing them, letting them know you, mm-hmm. right? It's through relationship. Like if, I, if there's one thing that I'm like convinced of, it's like on the streets, no, no good result is coming from, you know, beating a Bible over their head mm-hmm. per se, right? We've heard the homeless say that or like, oh, all those people want to do is beat a Bible over my head. It's like, but when you present the gospel in whatever way that is, as the missionaries or you go and love them mm. and then say, hey, I think there's something else that you could be more fulfilled, yep. you know, more happy, more joyful. That piques their curiosity. Yep. But it yeah. takes a lot of creativity and knowing the person in front of you. Yeah. I think it's super interesting too because I think a lot of times people can generally fall in like two extremes of approaching the situation of self-expression, especially with um, those, like like Sam was saying, the world yeah. tells us to um, just accept. Just accept the person in front of you and um, accept them for who they are. Allow them to be who they are. But then another group of people on the other end might say they're in that group. I don't want anything to do with it. They're they can, wrong. The, yeah, they're terrible. They you can, know. you know, whatever. They they will just do their thing. I'll do my thing, and we'll just we don't have to interact at all. Yep. Whereas the missionary or the person that chooses the middle ground allows that person to be where they're at, but then can call them to something higher and something better. And that's the real work. That's actually like not easy. And- Paul Scudo a few episodes ago talked a lot about that with addiction. Yeah. Right? It's like we, we've we come as a society, and he's seen this on the streets. This was his his observation was that we just accept addiction. And then there's no, there's no that's it. Like, yep, we're just accepting that that is someone who's struggling with drug, drug addiction or alcohol addiction. And Paul was trying to say, and I love this. It actually is very inspiring for so many different parallel examples of like, 
No, we of course accept that they're addicted and we love them in that. But we don't want those we love to like struggle with that. We want them to, to go higher. Yeah. But that's hard. Yeah. But it's worth it. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of this conversation that we had with Marco from Desert Stream Ministries um, about a month or two ago. And uh, they help a lot of uh, people who are struggling. He said that when, when somebody is expressing something very openly in an, a whole number of ways, when, when somebody is expressing, they are revealing a part of themselves that that should be considered. Sure. So instead of seeing those things as like opportunity to you know, jump in on and correct or mm-hmm. for me to judge, it, instead seeing them as invitations into the person to see who they are and why they are. So that's that aspect of going deeper, right? There's a yeah. sense where when, when somebody is expressing themselves in that way, they are kind of putting an invitation out there to see, for someone to see them in this deeper way. Maybe in a maybe in a over a little over the top way, sure. but nonetheless. And so, can I can I follow that line? Can I follow that momentum and learn more about who this person is, why they are the way they are, mm-hmm. what their likes, their interests are, their history, things like that? And then, when I get to a place where I feel like I really know them, then I can send out these invitations to maybe see life differently or to call them higher. So, going deeper versus going higher. The last one being just this understanding of self-expression, right? Accepting the poor where they're at. Considering conversion as let's take that deeper, right? That deeper, that first part of the relationship and then the higher. Wow. Thanks, Sam. We really appreciate it so much. I am I feel very lucky that we not only have you on our staff, but that you, me, and Blake get to go over these concepts. I think they're just good for our everyday life and for us working in this ministry as well. So yeah, I really appreciate it. And I'm sure our listeners feel the same way. So thank you to all of our listeners who joined in today on this podcast. I hope that you can take these these things that we've talked about today and apply them to your everyday life, especially if you are maybe going out and reaching out to the homeless, that you can use these these principles and help your relationships go a little bit deeper. So this is part two of a three-part series on going deeper or calling higher. And we are glad that you stuck along with us thus far, and we hope that you can make it to part three. See you all in a couple weeks. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Homeless But Human today. In order to keep producing this content for you all, we invite you to consider joining our known and loved monthly giving community. This is one of the most impactful ways that you can join us on mission. Your monthly gift sends missionaries out to the streets day after day and helps us to continue recording and sharing our podcast. It's our vision that every city not only has soup kitchens and shelters, but communities who are committed to helping the homeless know that they have a home in us. And what is home but a small taste of Christ's infinite love? Visit ChristInTheCity.org and make a monthly gift today to join our known and loved community. And if you enjoyed today's episode, do us a favor and go hit subscribe and leave a review. To get more involved with the mission, visit ChristInTheCity.org.